Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon, and welcome to a special presentation of SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube here at Nutanix headquarters in San Jose, California. Happy to have with me on the program a uh, multi-time guest, Dheeraj Pandey, who is the CEO of the newly public Nutanix uh, NTNX on the NASDAQ. Uh, Dheeraj, it's uh, nice to join you. Pleasure. All right, so, you know, tech, IPOs, they're back. So first of all, I think the entire tech industry says thank you um, because we've been waiting for this. You know, the stock market, something we all watch. Uh, I know, you know, from when uh, you guys had filed your S1 publicly uh, to now, took a little bit of time. Um, but uh, at the end, it's really exciting. I know, you know, you had your family with you uh, down in New York City, uh, had a lot of the, you know, early employees there, everyone from Nutanix celebrating kind of around the world. Uh, give us a little bit of take as to, uh, you know, what you were going through. Yeah, I think it was a, a extremely poignant moment for the company, for myself, uh, and all the early people. I mean, you know, we made it more inclusive than most of the companies would do because typically IPOs are more elitist events where like a few execs show up and so on. And uh, we worked really hard to say, look, with the more the merrier. And it was exactly that, the more the merrier. And we were able to fit everybody, including board members and advisors. And I think if you take a look at this, uh, sort of panoramic photograph that fits everybody together. There's confetti everywhere. Uh, I think it just takes you, you know, kind of into this very different world that says, look, this company was built on the shoulders of these people, and uh, this is the least we can do to thank them, actually. You know, and obviously the, the two weeks before that was extremely hectic. You know, there's like, you know, get into a private jet and you go into like 12 cities and talking to a ton of investors and. Uh, it was a lot of fun, a lot of uh, extremely pugilistic uh, meetings and you know, questions about where we headed. And it was great to actually enunciate, you know, who the company is and what we do. Because in a lot of the times you get kind of boxed into one or the other. Uh, because many companies do what you do today, but how you do it, why you exist, and where you're really headed you know, was extremely revealing for a lot of these people. So yeah, it, a ton of fun. It, it, it's fascinating to watch because uh, you did interviews uh, with, you know, some of the some of the big people, uh, you know, in kind of the media and finance world. Uh, and a lot of them probably have never heard the term hyperconverged infrastructure. Um, you know, they ask you questions like, oh, you know, cloud, that means, you know, are you competing against, you know, Apple and Google? And uh, I think there's other cloud players out there. Mm -hmm. You know, cloud seems to be a term that they've kind of heard on. Mm -hmm. um, anything surprise you as to kind of the whole IPO process? Um, you know, not much surprise uh, than the fact that, you know, when people say the two weeks are really grueling, to me, I think uh, I didn't lose, lose my voice, which was one of the things that everybody predicted was going to happen. And the fact that the team came together, you know, uh, you know like uh, we had Sudhish and Ken go to London, uh, and they had like six meetings, and there was really good, uh, you know, feedback coming from there. We actually even embraced Europe, said, look, we got to do Europe as well, because this is... One of the things as an international company, we need to actually respect, uh, you know, folks beyond the U.S. too. And then myself, Howard, and Dustin actually were uh, doing the U.S. circuit. And uh, I think it was more than the fact that it was grueling. It was really a lot of fun because you come out of these meetings and you think like, you know, they didn't get it. And when the orders come, they're like, wow. So, you know, I think uh, the respect that we got from the investors... Uh, obviously, you know, there's a whole bell curve of what investors are like today. There's enough of those are actually sitting as naysayers. There's uh, enough as fence-sitters, but we got a ton of believers. And, uh, you know, it showed in the results of the IPO as well. And every year, I think we'll convert enough naysayers to fence-sitters, enough fence-sitters to believers. And that's just the rite of passage of being a public company. Yeah, you, you've, you've talked uh, you know, at some of the conferences as well as uh, some of the articles you've written about just the multiple constituencies. You've got, you know, your customers, your internal, and now you've got kind of the fi financial constituencies. Um, Nutanix is now sitting in a market cap, you know, somewhere four to five billion dollars uh, at this point. Most people thought it would be kind of the two to two and a half billion dollars. Um, can you give any insight as to kind of that pull between kind of the banks, uh, the board, you know, what, and what, you, what, what the thinking is around that? Well, uh, first thing is that there's apples and oranges numbers because in the private company, you look at fully diluted shares. And in the public company, you look at basic shares because there's enough that is not vested or exercised or both, actually. You know? So the numbers look different, the total number of shares. When you multiply that, the share value itself. So the valuations in the private market are different than the valuations in the public market. Uh, and we were quite cognizant of that. We said, look, uh, you know, the Series E was done with a fully diluted number. And uh, what we were going out with was uh, still a great number, and compared to what Series E was, it was actually you know healthily bigger. 
And uh, we said, look, we want our investors to have win-win as well. I mean, because sometimes we try to squeeze too much and try to act a little cute. Uh, you miss out a lot of, on happy investors who are like, look, I think we have invested here. There's momentum. There's the right brain of the investor that also kicks in as opposed to the left brain that's defensive and conservative and, you know, thinking about uh, spreadsheets and money versus the right one that says, look, we won this together and I want to be in for the long haul. Okay. So since I've known you, you know, you've always had kind of the, a, a great long view. Uh, first time I, I came to Nutanix's headquarters, it was across the street. And it was a small little place. It felt like, you know, they were putting up certain awards and paint was drying on the wall. I think we first got the first, the kind of the, the blue and the green. And every time I visit here, there's a new floor, there's a new add-on. This time you've got the NTNX all over. I didn't see a big stock ticker mm -hmm. uh, anywhere though, but, uh, you know, you're done now, right? You've gone public, you know, it's the exit, you know, money. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole new line of, uh, you know, Tesla owners in the company. Uh, so, you know, you know, this isn't the end, uh, you know, what, what, yeah, what, what is, where is it in the journey? I mean, if anything, we don't even talk about the ticker or we are telling people, look, every day, uh, you should probably today because it's the paint is still new on the wall, look at it once a day and that's a win. In a few weeks, just look at it once a week and in a couple of months, just look at it once a month. And then this is the way you slowly wean away from looking at the numbers because after buying a car and a home, what will you do with all the money? So let it be where it is and focus on really building because we've barely begun as a company. I mean, if you think of companies that have changed their identities from where they were to where they are today, I mean, from selling books to selling retail e-commerce to selling computing, it's a massive journey. I mean, going from you know, what Microsoft was in 92 was an office productivity tools company to operating systems to personal computers to data center to whatever, cloud today. I think, you know, this is the journey that we are on. And seven years is nothing, you know, compared to what we believe. I mean, the great thing about us is that the market is big. I mean, the, it's about computing. Hyperconverged is, is a, an ephemeral word that will fade away, just like smartphone, the word smart faded away actually. You know, everything is a phone now, it's, and everything is smart actually. You know? So the idea of bringing everything together in pure software, the idea of doing more automation, more machine learning, more one click, you know, that stuff is what computing is all about. They're melding different clouds, you know, I think. So uh, in terms of innovation, there's so much to be had. And not just on the engineering side, but on you know, product management and marketing and sales and everything that we can innovate more on. You know? Uh, so I think people have uh, really looked at it as a checkpoint. It's a little bit of a validation, a pat on the back. And uh, I think we'd be remiss if we actually went and started to look at the ticker too much. So I think in this, in this whole company, we want to banish the ticker and focus on uh, things that matter. And yeah, checkpoint, whatever. I mean, because, you know, when you look at the uh, kind of the ground reality, there's enough people who came out of college. This was their first job. They've been working five, six years. They've been telling their spouses, look, this is going to be worth something. So the sacrifices, you know, will need to be sort of a little bit, uh, you know, responded to as well. So they'll go back and say, look, this was basically one checkpoint, but, you know, we do this, we buy a house, we pay for the mortgage, we buy a you know, shiny car, uh, but then let's go and do this for the next seven years. Okay, uh, we've got a, a big show of yours coming up uh, in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, the uh, dot next, I know uh, we, Interviewed you and uh, many of your customers, thought leaders uh, at the, the show in Vegas. You've been doing road tours all around the world, uh, but the big European show is coming towards the beginning of November in Vienna. Uh, what are you looking forward to at that show? What, what, what can uh, people expect that are going? Well, one thing that we've done really well as a company is to, when we build a product, like, you know, we built our, you know, operating system. We said, let's take it to where the customer is. Let's meet them where they are. That's why, uh, you know, I personally don't believe the public cloud is, is it's too rigid an opinion. That, oh, everybody should come to us because we built our own. And that's what we're doing with this whole idea of taking this operating system, you know, it's an enterprise cloud operating system, and take it to where people are. And when we build another product like .next show, we're like, look, let's go and meet where people are, as opposed to having this self-righteous feeling that everybody should come to us, whether it's Vegas or, you know, DC or Miami or what have you. So I think it's it's that kind of uh, an aspiration that takes us to 100 cities. And it's a lot of work. I mean, the team here, you know, does a lot of work to actually take it to where people are. And uh, Vienna is special. I think it's one of the cities that I'd love to learn more about in terms of history and so on. Uh, we are doubling down in Germany and Northern Europe. And we've done a pretty good job outside the U.S. in terms of international business. We're already 35 plus percent international, which is 
basically telling you that we've built a business that's not a hack. Because many companies come out public and they still haven't figured out, you know, they have zero muscle memory on international business. You know, what does the channel look like? What does the distribution look like? What about Japan and Germany and places like that? So we, in the last four or five years, we've seeded a lot of these countries and now it's time to double down. And going and trying to understand their business itself, like, you know, what are the safe harbor laws and what are the compliance things that they worry about? What are they, because the cloud is going to be such a, nuanced term outside the US that you need to really learn exactly what it means to really consume infrastructure like that we want to consume. Right. But when, when it comes to the conference though, one of the things I've, I've loved about your events is not only do you bring in speakers that stretch my brain, but they're ones that you actually have relationships with. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it, it's always interesting. Uh, you know, I, I looked, you've got speaker series coming through here. So uh, Condoleezza Rice, who spoke uh, at the Miami event, uh, spoke here. Uh, uh, Dr. Vinod Khosla, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think was here today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, you've got one of your favorite authors is, is coming to Vienna. I'm yeah, looking forward it. to, uh, you know. Nassim Taleb, I mean, and, and there's so much to learn. I mean, a lot of his writings are very profound. You have to probably read his books a couple of times, but they're deep. And uh, even if people get like 5% of it, like we were talking about his books today in Vinod's talk as well, you know, starting from Black Swan, you know, like what does it mean to get consequential things as opposed to so quantum jumps in things in life and how unpredictable they are and how it changed the world to uh, Anti-Fragility, which is yet another really important book that we as a company have to embody and imbibe actually, you know, because you go through highs and lows, and you know, the stock's gonna go high and go low, and there's gonna be things that we don't even have control on because of which the company's angst, the collective angst will actually grow. And people really have to understand that, look, failures like that, or you know, having a bad press sometimes, things like that, you just have to take it in its uh, stride. And, and what comes out of it is a stronger company. You know, in the last seven years, we've gone through a lot of lows as well as highs, and I think the lows have only made us stronger, actually. And somebody was telling me um, recently about Google Maps and Apple Maps, and they said Google pushed Apple too hard on the negotiation, and what came out was Apple Maps. Because they said, look, this is not the way we can be treated. You know, at the end of the day, we would never have gone into Maps, but the way it was actually done tells us that we need to control our destiny. You know, AHV was like that we probably would not have gotten into the hypervisor business <laughs> had it not been the way we were treated, actually. You know? And what came out is what's come out, what's going to come out with that is going to be a thing of beauty, actually. You know? Wow. That's very interesting. Um, it reminds me of the, the first conversation I had with you. We talked about distributed architectures uh, and really some of the biggest engineering challenges we have the day, of the day. And you know, think about things like the chaos monkey, uh, you know, going into Netflix and making sure to kill things. It's almost mm -hmm. some of the same, same things you talk about with anti-fragility. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's one of my favorite topics these days. You know, there's another one that as a company we're really focusing on a lot. It's called authenticity. And uh, there's a great speaker, his name is Mike Robbins, and he's like really embedded into the fabric of the company at every middle manager, VP, kind of uh, IC level. He's conducting these things about what is authenticity. And, I mean, including the way we have to do our press releases and collaterals and things like that. And the formula is really simple. It says authenticity is actually honesty, but you have to take out something and add something. And then you scratch your head, like, what does it mean? I thought honesty was good enough. And then the way he said it makes it really clear, and yet it's very profound. It's like, like you need to take out self-righteousness from honesty and then add vulnerability to make it authentic. And then you start to think about it like, wow, that is powerful. You know? So we're going deep into vulnerability as a topic. Like, you know, I just found a professor, uh, she uh, focuses only on vulnerability. So she'll be part of our speaker series very soon. We'll, so we're trying to understand these kind of terms and topics that basically is what about organizational building and company building, as opposed to just technology and distributed systems and web scale engineering and things like that. You know? Wow. So uh, the Nutanix Next uh, conference in Vienna is actually going to be the same week as the U.S. Uh, presidential elections. Mm -hmm. uh, I would sure wish that some of that self-righteousness self could be pulled out so that we could have a good debate and discussion of, uh, of proper things rather yeah, than so. you know, so. think, yeah. moving back to our corners. Yeah, that reminds me. It looks like we'll have to vote by mail, actually. Yes, right? <laughs> absolutely. I have my absentee ballot uh, you know, uh, stuff in order. Anybody that's attending from the U.S. Uh, should definitely take a look. All right, Dear, I want to give you the final word. Uh, come 
coming out from the IPO, uh, any last words you'd like to share with the audience of Newton Nation? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the word Newton Nation uh, is resonating a lot, which means that people are coming together. It was a great coming together of people uh, thanking each other. It's a whole family. Uh, and the way, you know, their families have sacrificed, I think, is, is just a culmination of one first phase of this company. And there's so much more to do that I can't even tell you that, I mean, the world doesn't know who we are yet. You know, they're scratching the surface, they're boxing us into what hyper-converged is and things like that. But eventually what could emerge from this company is way different than what it is today. Okay, well, it has been a pleasure to be able to document much of what's been going on. Please be sure to check out siliconangle.tv where you can find uh, the exclusive coverage from Nutanix.next in Vienna uh, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash siliconangle. There's an entire playlist of all the interviews we've done with Diraj over the years. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check, check us out at the shows, and thank you for watching theCUBE.